Good morning, everyone. This is Karen Taylor. I'm your ministry coordinator at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome to worship. This morning, I'm actually reporting to you from our parking lot. Behind me, you will see our new uh, administrative wing going on. And because it's kickoff Sunday, I wanted to show you behind the scenes. I actually got special permission to go inside the building today. So uh, I got special permission, but that does not mean that it's open for anybody else. But first, I wanted to show you this great, I'm gonna flip around my camera here, I think. Here it is. I wanted to show you this great prayer garden. This is located at the south end of our parking lot. So this prayer garden is being built by John Burquist. He's our facility manager. And it is open for anybody who needs a little bit of calm and a little uh, safe space to come and just be by themselves. This is a very hectic time, going back to school, trying to figure out what to do with this pandemic situation. So this is a very nice prayer garden. So let's pan over here to our building. We're gonna walk over here into the building. All right, here we are in front of the building. So we are looking at our new Cornerstone 2020. We're gonna enter into the front doors. Now I have to tell you, I have not seen this. So, oh, there I am. Hello, everyone. Over here is going to be the office. This will be where Jamie is. As we turn to this side, this office is gonna be Casey's, our youth director. This office will be mine and probably our new graphic designer. We'll probably share an office here. This is going to be Pastor Diane's office and Rose. This office down here is going to be Pastor Alicia's office. And then across from Pastor Alicia will be Pastor Ben. Okay, we're looking down the main hall here. So down this way, this is the, the office where Jamie will be. And in here is gonna be a very large conference room. In here is gonna be Rita's office. This is gonna be uh, where the, all the music um, room will be. Now, down this hallway, there is going to be some bathrooms. Oh, look at there, yeah, they have the shower. So this will be great for our Hope House families. And then behind us, you guys can see the hookups. These are gonna be for the washer and dryer. Okay, so now we're crossing over into the existing building. Ooh, this is exciting, I have not seen this. So these are our previous classrooms. Look at, there's still our, it's like a time warp here. Down here, so this is a new uh, emergency exit. And then I believe this is gonna be some storage down here. So we're gonna sneak through. Besides, oh my goodness gracious, our generous donors not only have provided this beautiful administrative wing, but they also are going to help remodel the fellowship hall. We are gonna be getting some new flooring. They are going to fix our bumpy, ugly acoustic ceiling. And I believe they're gonna install some new lighting. So our fellowship hall is gonna get a little facelift. And then, so these two bathrooms will be remodeled right now. They still look the same as they did. But these two uh, bathrooms at the south entry are getting a little facelift, getting modernized. And then as we progress, these bathrooms are gonna be converted to single use bathrooms and they will be non gendered, similar to the family bathrooms we have down by the fellowship. So uh, the flooring will get replaced. Um, no more leakiness going on in here in the men's bathroom. So that's very exciting. I look forward to the day where we all can be back in here. When you do come back in, it most definitely will look different, um, more fresh, more modern. We'll have brand new bathrooms thanks to our generous donors. So thanks for tuning in. I look forward to all of the great things happening with our new fall programming. Enjoy your day.
morning and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Good morning and welcome to worship at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church of New Prague, Minnesota. My name is Ben Hilding, one of the pastors here. It's a joy to be with you in worship this morning. Today is our kickoff Sunday. We're kicking off a new programmatic year of ministries and we're excited to launch into this new phase of ministry. If you're part of the Holy Trinity family of faith, you probably received on your doorstep this weekend this gift for you. It's this Holy Trinity bag and in it there were some goodies. If you ordered any apparel like shirts or things like that, that would have been in there. Uh, there's a car decal for you for fun. If you want to put that on your bumper, you sure can. But then there's also this Final report of the 2020 vision process. We've spent the past year as a church looking into what's God's vision for our future as a congregation. What's our mission? What are our core values? And while things look differently today, uh, we still believe that this vision is more applicable than ever to guide us in these uncharted territories. So we're going to talk about that today, and I hope that you can follow along in this report that you received. Now we're about six months into this process of worshiping online. It may feel sometimes like you're worshiping alone, like you're not with anybody, or it just doesn't quite feel like church as we know and love. But today we wanted to kick off this new year reminding you that as you worship today, you aren't alone because in different places around town and even around the country, there's people tuning in and and watching and worshiping with you. So take a look. Melissa, it's starting. Come on. watching from your phone, a tablet, in front of your computer, a screen, or listening on the radio. Today you are not alone. We are still gathered together as the body of Christ. And we are still one family of faith. This morning, may we begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we do so, 
let us begin by recognizing our common need for a Savior as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority alone, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let's sing together. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heaven, the King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. God of all who wander in the wilderness, you go before us as beacon and guide. Lead us through all danger. Sustain us through all desolation. 
and bring us home to the land you have prepared for us. Amen. Let us now turn to the word of God found in Scripture. A reading from Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the, le and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Nephtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negeb, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoah. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I'll give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you. From God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate, Comforter, and Friend. Amen. Picture with me this. Picture with me a time when you were driving or riding in a vehicle and there was so much precipitation that you could hardly see 10 feet in front of you. Picture with me a time when the rain was coming down so hard you thought you should have stayed home but you had to get to the destination you needed to get to and as you were driving you had to turn the radio down because you were so overwhelmed with the sound of the raindrops coming down as loud as clapping hands and your windshield wipers were going so fast but they couldn't keep up with the rain as it downpoured on your vehicle. Picture with me a time when you were driving in the winter and the snow fell and the wind howled and all you could see was white as you looked out your windows and you prayed to God that as you drove you were still on the road and that there was not anything coming your way because it would have been impossible for you to avoid it. When you can't see 10 feet in front of you, it makes it very difficult to know how to go forward. As the Israelites journeyed in the wilderness for 40 years, they followed their leader Moses. They had detours, they had roadblocks, they had highs, they had lows. But finally, in our reading from Deuteronomy chapter 34, which is the last chapter of the final, the fifth book of the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, we get to Deuteronomy. This whole journey leads to this is the last chapter. And as they rise up, up on the mountain of Mount Nebo, Moses looks over the land and realizes that they made it. They may not have known how to make it through every step of their way there, but they had a vision to reach the promised land. And as chapter 34 of Deuteronomy concludes, we hear that Moses sees this vision in the distance. He sees this opportunity for his people to arrive at the place that they have envisioned in their minds for 40 years. And while they didn't know how to get through, they knew where they were going. And that God's hand was leading them. And it was right there. Right there at the end of the journey, the beginning of the arrival that Moses dies with the vision 
come into fruition. Folks, today you and I are given a gift. You and I are given a gift of the vision that this church has of what God is calling us to do and to be. We're given this vision that has been informed by the 70 years of people who, like Moses, brought us to this place. Brought us to this place where we had highs and lows and rivers and valleys and lots of different detours and roadblocks, but now we know what the vision is that God is calling us to. Because we believe that if you don't have that clarity of vision, it's like driving through a rainstorm when your windshield wipers can't keep up with the downpour. Folks, we have challenges around us. We have a global pandemic. We've got a divided, polarized world. And we've got just an overwhelming amount of stress, anxiety, disconnection, fear, and just loss that we grieve because the world isn't how we thought it would be at this time and place. But as a church, there's a reason we're here. God has given us a calling. God has called us to be here. So thanks to your work this past year, thanks to all of the efforts to make this final report possible, this isn't just going to sit on the shelf. This is going to guide us. This is going to be what we reach for when we're not quite sure how to go forward or take the next step. We, like Moses in the wilderness, have a vision. And I'm excited to share that with you now. Holy Trinity's vision is to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. Holy Trinity's mission. Welcome, worship, respond. All are welcome. Every person has a place at God's table. No exceptions. Rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we seek to be a loving community where all can belong. The heart of our identity is as a worshiping community gathered around word and sacrament. Our worship has personality, and we want you to leave feeling filled up. We engage scripture, music, reflection, prayer, and humor to help people build a meaningful, close relationship with God and each other. In gratitude to God's grace, we cannot help but courageously and generously respond to the evolving needs of our greater community. With loving hearts and helpful hands, we are called to work together to contribute to the health of the church and the good of the world. The values of Holy Trinity are community, authenticity, and inclusivity. God has created us to be in relationships with one another. We value intergenerational relationships with people, families, the church, our neighbors, the larger church body, partner organizations, and with creation itself. We seek to be an active and visible part of the greater New Prague area to contribute to a safe, supportive, and life-giving community. Come as you are. We seek to be humble and genuine. We acknowledge our imperfections because God loves us for who we already are. We believe we are wonderfully different. We believe the diversity of people and thought is fundamental to Christian unity. What ties us together is the promise of God's grace. It's beautifully complicated. Now our vision is like our ultimate goal. It's what we strive for no matter what. And as long as we're looking at that goal, we know that we're going in the right direction. Our mission is what it takes to get there. It guides our every step. It's our purpose for existing. It's how we seek to achieve our goal of that destination. And our values tell us how we journey. How we behave, how we treat each other, what makes us faithful to who God calls us to be as Christians as we seek to do God's work in the world. So our vision. 
sharing God's love for all people from one generation to the next. Folks, this is our calling. In our gospel reading today, Jesus was tested by the Pharisees. The lawyer came to him and questioned him, which is the greatest of all these commandments? Jesus had to summarize all the commandments that were given to him, and he said it boiled down to this. Love God with all your heart, your mind, and with all your soul. And love your neighbors as yourself. This whole reason we exist as a Christian group of Jesus followers is to love God and to love our neighbor. And that's our vision. We can know that we are faithful to God's calling to Holy Trinity if we can share that love, share God's love for all people, no exceptions, from one generation to the next. I want you today to see if you can say that with me. To share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. Let's do it again. The words are on the screen. Share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. Now the screen is going to go away and I want you to say it with me. Our vision at Holy Trinity is to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. That's our vision. That's our promised land. We will know we are faithful to God's calling to us if we can do that, if we can share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. So what does it take to get from point A to point B? What does it take to guide us through the promised land telling us what we do in order to get there? What we do is our mission. That is what it boils down to. That's our purpose for being here. This is our mission. And our mission at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church is to welcome, worship, and respond. I want you to say it with me. Welcome, worship, and respond. Now without the, without the cues. Welcome, worship, respond. Finally, our values. Our values are our guiding principles that show how we behave, how we welcome, how we worship, and how we respond. And those three values are community, authenticity, and inclusivity. I want you to say that with me. Community, authenticity, and inclusivity. Now without the notes. Community, authenticity, and inclusivity. So while you and I are not gathered together in person at our church, we've been away for six months, we still believe that it's our mission to welcome, worship, and respond. And even from our own screens, whether you are in front of a tablet, a phone, a computer, or listening on the radio, we seek to be community in how we do it. We seek to be authentic in how we do it. And we seek to be inclusive in how we do it. So community, we want people to be involved. We don't want this just to be a performance on a screen from a couple of people representing the greater community. No, we appreciate your offerings and the ways in which you engage in the worship service itself. Authenticity, we value authenticity in these services. So whether or not you get dressed up still on Sunday morning, like I know Dirk does, he still does that, and... I believe it to be true. Or you wear PJs and slippers, you got your hair curlers in and you're eating popcorn like the Millers, or you're watching in bed like Revan. Be authentic, your real self. You don't have to pretend to be someone you're not when you are here, so come as you are. We believe that God loves us for who we already are. And finally, inclusivity. This church was founded on being the church where people who didn't fit elsewhere could come to Holy Trinity. So whether you are Czech background or Scandinavian, whether you are born in New Prague or from outside, whether you are Democrat or Republican, whether you're a Packer fan or a Viking fan, you are part you are invited to be a part of this because we believe 
that we are wonderfully different. We believe that the diversity of people and thought is fundamental for Christian unity. Sure, that makes it beautifully complicated sometimes, but we like it that way. This is our church. This is what will guide us going forward. These are our core values that will show us how we live out our mission. The grand test. Our vision. See if you can do it. Our vision is to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. Our mission is to welcome, worship, and respond. And our core values are community, authenticity, and inclusivity. This is who we believe God has called us to be as Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Now fundamentally, this isn't just a nice package of words that we came up with. We believe that we receive this identity as a gift from God with our true compass being a man born 2,020 years ago across the world named Jesus of Nazareth. Because this man is more than our leader. We are more than followers of his because he is more than the Son of Man. He is the Son of God. And he shows us not just how we are to live our lives, but who God is in this world. So as we seek to be followers, we follow in his footsteps. And we believe Jesus welcomed. He welcomed a couple of scraggly shepherds to his manger scene the day he was born. He welcomed unkept fisher people to be his teammates in ministry. And as he went teaching and healing, he welcomed the tax collectors and the sinners, the sick and those who were left out for one reason or another. And ultimately, he welcomed even the criminal on the cross as he said, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus welcomed and even he himself worshipped. As a young boy, the parents couldn't find him anywhere, but they found him in the temple as he was worshipping God. And on the night that he was betrayed, he went to the garden to pray because he needed to worship God himself. And as they gathered the disciples around that table in the upper room that night, he says, I want you to take this bread and take this cup and do this in remembrance of me. Jesus showed us how to worship. And finally, Jesus responded. As the disciples were frantically wondering what to do as the waters of the sea raged over their boat, Jesus responded. When the blind men, when the paralytic, when the garrison demonia came to him for healing, Jesus responded. And when he saw this world separated from God, full of sin, needing hope, needing promise, needing salvation, needing a Savior, Jesus responded with his own death and resurrection, giving you and I the promise of new life. Folks, as we begin this new year, you may feel stressed or overwhelmed, anxious or afraid, grieving or just frustrated. You may feel like you're trying to go down a road, but you can only see 10 feet in front of you because the weather is so bad. But today you and I are given a gift of a vision. A vision that will guide us as a church and guide us as Christians for how we can know whether or not we're being faithful. Whether or not we're doing the right thing in this time and place. Because as long as we have our eyes set on this destination, like Moses did and the Israelites did, as they had their eyes in the promised land, we have our eyes on this vision that we are called to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. That's who God has called us to be. That's what God has called us to do. And we have this calling and this purpose 
at this time and place. But we also have Jesus as our leader and guide. He's not just sitting in heaven judging us on how we're doing. Jesus is showing us the way. Jesus is responding to our own needs in this time and place. But this Jesus of Nazareth also shows us who God is and what we see in him is that God will stop at nothing to show and to share God's love for us because nothing, nor height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demon, nor face masks, or social distancing can separate us from the love of God given through Christ Jesus our Lord. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the church of the dead and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, let us now gather our first and best in offering to the Lord.
Please join us in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before our final benediction, a couple quick announcements. First of all, today we are having our first drive-in communion services. A little different than normal, but nonetheless, we receive bread for the journey in front of us together. So those services are at 5, 5.30, and 6 o'clock. If you'd like to sign up for one, you need to pre-register ahead of time with some other details that you can find on our church website. Secondly, uh, this week we begin uh, an adult education opportunity with a personal mentor of both mine and Pastor Alicia's, Chris Johnson. He'll be leading a class, uh, two options for that class, on Wednesday evening and Thursday midday on Tending the Soul, Finding Courage and Resilience in Stressful Times. And lastly, in a week and a half we launch our Children's Youth and Family Ministries, so for Children and middle school age students, we are ready and rearing to go with confirmation and our Wednesday night children's ministry opportunity, so you can register for those. We really encourage you to do so. And actually this Wednesday, we're going to have a campfire at the church for high school kids as a chance to just connect and to check in with each other and make plans for the year of how we can be there for you in the challenges and the journey ahead. But nonetheless... We are a church called to share God's love for all people from one generation to the next. That's our calling and that's our vision. And so may we go knowing that Christ goes with us. May he go before us to show the way, behind us to encourage us, beside us to befriend us, above us watching over us, and within us to give us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God.